this event, guys, I I don't really know if this was it for me. A lot of great things, especially the idea, but a couple of things that I would probably tweak a bit. Hi, welcome back to an Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking first about the Doomfire Strike event. We've kind of come to the end of it, and I have a lot on my mind about this event, both positive and negative. And so I just wanted to run through a couple of these different points and see like how you guys felt about them, because there might be a couple of points where like my feelings are validated, and then a couple of other points where you're going to be like, oh, Oh, stop whining boy and then after that I want to talk about the upcoming event which has a teaser dropped and so with that let's jump right into the content and so let's start with the things that I thought were good and so first I want to come over to the dune fire rankings which is essentially our reward system me personally I love that they just put like kind of the extra items that we can farm for like um these uh, I always forget what these are called these sublimes as well as a nitium and then they have all of the exclusive stuff like this furniture like down lower because again there are going to be a lot of like non day one players Players, players that have just started in the last month or two. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen a lot of marketing for like India and for Thailand and for other C countries as well. And so it would be a real shame if those guys came into the game and were like, wow, I can't get this exclusive furniture. And so that's the first piece of praise that I do want to give them. Like, I think even like down to here, 16,500 is very, very achievable over all of those days. And depending on who you ask, a lot of people would say that this star crest is probably the most like value item of all of them. And so yeah, the reward structure it's great. I love it. I love to see it. All right, moving on to the gameplay of the event itself, Final Vanguard. So this is a pretty interesting one. I liked the idea of it. The idea was very, very good. Let's just hop into a stage or something. I don't know. And them allowing supports for us is really good. I hope they remember to keep it as kind of like a standard. And so guys, this whole like endless wave kind of content, I actually quite like it. It's really cool because it feels like it is endless. Like they just keep coming and coming and coming. And so it doesn't make or it kind of highlights the importance of the healers and on top of that i would most certainly call this game mode like innovative it's like there are a lot of different strategies that you employ in this game mode that you wouldn't employ in the other ones right and what i mean by that is like for example we were going from wave one to wave two however if we were new for example if we were going from wave two to wave three and we knew that wave three was bosses then what we could do was like store for our skills and all of that right and so in my opinion this game mode really highlighted like the use of active skill management for me personally every time i was on wave 14 going into 15 when I'm doing the purgatory mode. I always made sure that all of my skills were up. However, getting there, like there was also a lot of management involved. For example, if I was to blow like all of my skills, then I actually would not have anything for the next round after that. Or even like two rounds later, right? Because like some of these have like pretty high CDs. And so that's why I say like the active skill management is pretty important here. And I think this is just something that I've felt like I've never had to do before. On top of that, this event really like brought out the strengths of the like infinite stacking characters. So I'm talking characters like Revy, as you can see the Dauntless Heart at the very bottom. Or similarly, if I hover over Iridan, you will see the Gold Marsh Mark, which also gives her extra damage for normal attacks and chain combos. Now this is really interesting because to me personally, this is both a positive and a negative. It's a positive because it means a certain archetype thrives in this and that's kind of cool, but it's kind of negative because it almost feels like Revy, who has this stacking mechanic that is based on the amount of waves that has passed so for example, if we got up to like wave 12 or 13, Revy would have max stacks. So this 16 would be at 99 actually. It almost feels like they've created a problem which we needed to solve, which is fine, fair enough. But then on top of that, they've kind of also sold the solution, which was Revy. And so to kind of contextualize it or give it like another example, imagine if the new character or like Revy or whoever could actually like silence so they could disable these bomb characters. And the only way to access this silence mechanic to like not let these guys destroy my tiles was to actually draw it from the newest gacha. Me personally, I'm not 100% comfortable with that. And so yeah, that's kind of like how I felt with Revy in the purgatory stage. Because if you guys did make it up to the boss, like you'll realize he has an insane amount of HP and defense and he was just so freaking tanky and hard to deal with. But after I got Revy and <laughs> I didn't really want Revy, she kind of like just smoked him like really hard. Her active at max stacks did like 33% damage to the boss in one active. And so yeah, it was kind of like a disgusting feeling. And so with that, maybe let's start talking about the things that I wasn't so happy with. So obviously that was the first one, but the next thing I want to talk about is the wave two out of 12, or like for purgatory, it was uh, 15 waves. So guys, having 15 waves was not the issue. I found it really fun actually, being able to climb all the way to the top with every day having like kind of different maps. But I think the issue for me was the fact that it was every day. It, it started really 
really turning into a chore. And honestly, by like day five or six, it kind of felt like I was just doing the same thing over and over with just a different like tile RNG. And so to be honest, by that point, I kind of felt burnt out. So like, although they did have like the bosses changing, so this guy was sometimes like those two bosses with the big tails. Yeah, that's cool. But I felt like the daily rotational was a bit too much, especially because it was for 15 total waves. And I don't know about you guys, but like for Purgatory, it actually took me about like probably 40 minutes each day just to do this. And so if I was to offer some constructive criticism, maybe have it like every two or every three days, because I think that this wave challenge mode is actually really innovative. It's really interesting. For me personally, when I went through it the first time and I hit floor 15, it was actually really fun for like the first like two or three days. On top of that, the boss at floor 15 was unfortunately the same for every single day. So that meant that like the Thunder teams really thrived here. And that's kind of okay, right? Because everyone needs to build their mono teams, especially because Spire exists. But for me personally, I think this water boss like and having it repeat every single day, it definitely will for me personally contributed to the monotony. Every single day, I would just take my Revy and take the rest of my Thunder team and go smash this boss. And so yeah, that just definitely kept feeling like a chore. And guys, I know it sounds like I'm bashing this game mode hard. No, please do not take it that way. I think that the game mode itself is actually really, really fun, but like just some tweaks could make it really, really good. If I was to sum it all up, yes, it was fun, but it did feel like a chore, especially by the end. And honestly, by the end of it, I would have rather done secret territory than this. And that's <laughs> that's really saying something, right? All right, moving on from this one, uh, this, this is actually a real positive. The fact that they offer different levels, so like easy, normal, hard purgatory, I think that's quite nice. And on top of that, the fact that you could clear hard every single day and maybe clear like a little bit of purgatory, which would get you max rewards, that was, in my opinion, like a really great reward design. So in terms of like the points requirements translating into the rewards, I think that was completely, it was great. All right, let's go back. And I think that's kind of it for the event. Story was decent. It is what it is. The fact that it doesn't cost stamina was good. The fact that like the entire event doesn't cost any stamina is also really good. And I guess with that, that kind of really like wraps up like my thoughts on this event, Doomfire Strike. And so guys, let me know how you felt about this event down into the comments below. But otherwise, with that being said, let's have a look at the sneak peek for the upcoming event. All right, guys. So I am on the Alchemy Stars Twitter. And as you can see, we have a new event coming coming in that's about five days. So October 21st. And if you have a look at this one, it's pretty much like Halloween themed. And if you actually go ahead and watch the video or like listen to the sounds, it is it's really freaking spooky guys. And so that's kind of the teaser for it. However, we did get a little bit more information in the TGS, the Tokyo Game Show. And so this bad boy over here is essentially telling us the events going from October till the end of the year. And so as you can see, we have late October, let the wind carry the news. And so this is really interesting, right? Because when I look at this and I look at that, it, it doesn't really look the same, right? If anything, I would have associated this, the spooky, spooky feeling to like the Shadow in the Mist event, which is apparently coming in mid-November. However, this is what the big dog has told us. They have told us that the Let the Wind Carry the News is coming in late October, in which 21 of October, that's pretty much late October. And so do get hyped for this one. And I think I can make one more prediction, kind of. And that is at Tokyo Game Show, they also showed off a whole bunch of the upcoming Aurorians. In front, we have Graham and Revy, but if you have a look to the side over here and here, you'll see that we have two characters which are partially lit up. And so I'm pretty sure that these two characters are gonna be coming up in the next event. And there are some guesses in the community. I think people have said that like this one is gonna be forest. And the one on the right look blatantly looks like a forest unit as well. On top of that, we also have the event preview over here. And so if I click into it, unfortunately we won't be able to see it. But in my opinion, day three, day four, or day five, you're probably gonna see the characters. And so keep an eye out for those two characters that I just showed you over here. But otherwise, that's all we know about the upcoming event. Like, let the wind carry the news. Honestly, with this kind of name for the event and these two characters, it kind of does make sense. And I don't know about you guys, but I am going all in for this one over here. Oh my God, I need to get choked by those thighs. And if I could just get like a taste. Anyway, so that is it for the video. There were a lot of predictions, a lot of thoughts, a lot of opinions in this one. And so let me know how you feel about it all. First of all, how did you feel about the event? event itself, Doomfire Strike. Did you feel that my constructive criticism was kind of fair or should I just stop whining and suck it up? On top of that, what do you think the new event's gonna be 
about, let the wind carry the news. I think it's going to be like an even sensor event. But you guys let me know what you think. And so if you would drop your thoughts down into the comments below, I would really appreciate it. Because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. And if you would like to support the channel, we got like some membership things as well as affiliate links in the description below. But you guys already know what's coming. As Graham once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.